surrender to me is going towards the pain. What is the information that that pain holds? What is it that my body is trying to express that I'm resisting? And that might be as simple as standing up and stretching or walking away from the cubicle or walking away from the job. It may be very, very simple, but following that thread of what we're calling surrender is really looking at the information that resistance and pain holds in the direction that it gives us. And so you start to see that there's actually a flow in life that is not the construction that we create out of this identity of self and time and meaning, but rather it is the following of the pointing that resistance gives us. It's almost counterintuitive in a way. So that's what I mean by surrender. It's not a surrender to something, and it's certainly not a surrender to a person, a teacher, an authority. It's actually just the letting go of the resistance and flowing with the intelligence that is already there when we don't push back. Some people might refer to that flow state or that surrender or giving up the resistance to being in touch with more of an intuitive state or a more authentic state. What do you think about that? Yeah, so it's really more of a shift of perspective or location. It's less what I have, what I hold, not my intuition, not my instinct, not my enlightenment, not my insight, not my knowing. It's rather the expression of a field of consciousness, which is moving me, you, and presumably everyone. Yeah, maybe intuition is pointing to that, but it's not that. This is the thing that's maybe critical to see is that the tools that we use are not the right tools. So the tools that we use, which is the structure of mind, or even the structure of feeling, or or the structures of emotion, or even the somatic structures, are not sufficient to apprehend the totality, the field, the field of consciousness. It's acting all the time. It's got direction to it. And so that directionality of consciousness when we're not trying to construct a subset of that constantly, has its own flow. Now, what's intuition in that? I don't know. I really don't. I can say that that's my insight into, or my feeling of, or my feeling into, but the challenge is that as soon as I have an insight, I quickly encapsulate that into knowing. And then when I know something, I'm already in resistance to the thing which is dynamic, right? The field of consciousness is dynamic, but knowing is static. And so if intuition can stay free of its own knowledge, then fine. Then I say intuition and the flow of consciousness are one and the same. But the tendency is to have that insight, and then encapsulated into knowing. And knowing does not apply when it comes to, let's say, the movement of consciousness. Knowing is great if you're going to build a bridge, you know, if you're a mathematician, if you want to drive a bus, knowing how to shift gears is good. But in the realm that we're talking about, which is how does the field of consciousness move through form? Knowing is not useful. The realm of knowing or information, you know, which is the practical, I'm brushing my teeth, there's the tube of toothpaste, I'm going to squeeze it, and toothpaste is going to come out. That's the realm of information in which we provisionally set up a location, which is my teeth, my hand, toothbrush, and toothpaste, right? 
And in that provisional locating of these elements, I brush my teeth. Okay, there's not really a problem. The problem comes in when that becomes an identity. And I start to imagine there's not enough toothpaste in the world. And I have to gather more toothpaste and I have to take it away from you because I'm not going to have enough. So we extrapolate from this world of information into the psychological. Right. But the real exploration, once you have formulated enough information to live, which is a pretty basic uh, part of life, you then have the psychological realm, which is more, like it's not enough. And that's that realm can occupy a whole life. And rather than that, how about the realm of exformation? That is, the spaces, the elements, the dynamics which are not contained within my information. That's a whole exploration, and it requires coming to the end of your own knowing and being curious about what is beyond what I know and not entering that unknown with the idea of capturing more of it into the known, rather letting go of knowing and entering into this other space.